The internal combustion engine. We have seen previously how the engine evolved through time, from a machine powered by humans to the steam engine that fueled the industrial revolution. For the next generation of engines, a new source of energy is going to be used, explosions. When explosions happen, different gases will be released quickly with an increase in temperature and a rapid increase in volume and the release in energy in an extreme manner. The basic idea of this new engine is to create tiny explosions in a controllable manner and use the energy released to drive the engine. And I think the best way to really grasp the inner workings of the internal combustion engine is to try to build one from scratch. Shall we start? Let's start from the beginning. So how can we make an explosion? To create an explosion, we need a flammable material, air, and a heat source. We will use gasoline as our flammable material, and we will mix it with air. To create heat, we will use an electrical spark. Let's now create a little cylinder to make our explosion inside it. We will also fit our electrical spark in it. At the end of this cylinder, we will fit a moving piston to create the motion. Let's also connect this piston to some kind of shaft that will convert the piston movement into mechanical work. Now through a valve, let's call it the inlet valve, we will inject our air gasoline mix. Let's now try our system. Now let's move the piston upward to create some pressure and increase the temperature to aid the explosion. Now let's light the electrical spark and boom! Perfect, it's working exactly as we designed it. The piston was pushed down and caused the shaft to rotate. The piston is back again to its original position. Now we are ready to inject the air gasoline mixture again and get another push. But wait a second, the first explosion resulted in a mixture of gases that are filling the cylinder. This is definitely going to interfere with our explosion. So let's get rid of all these gases first. How can we do that? Well, we can design it in a lot of different ways. But let's just have another valve in the cylinder to get rid of all these gases. Let's put it here and we will call it the exhaust valve. Okay, so now let's start all over again. Inject the air gasoline mixture. Push the piston up to increase pressure and temperature. And light the spark. Boom! Again, it's working. The piston is pushed down. The shaft is rotating. Now let's open the exhaust valve. The piston now under its own momentum will go up again and push the unwanted gases out of the exhaust valve. Then the piston will go down again and increase the volume of the chamber. At the same time we will close the exhaust valve, open the inlet valve, inject the air gasoline mixture again, close the inlet valve, the piston will go up again increasing pressure and temperature. Now let's light the spark again and boom the cycle goes on. I think we did it. We have just designed our first internal combustion engine. Let's review the way this engine works again. So first the piston will go down to increase the volume of the chamber. Air fuel mixture will be injected through the inlet valve. Let's call this stroke 1. Then the piston will go up, increasing the pressure and temperature of the mixture. Let's call this stroke 2. Then we will have the spark and the piston will be pushed down. Let's call this stroke 3. Under its own momentum, the piston will go up again, the exhaust valve will be open and the resulting gases will be pushed out. Let's call this stroke 4. Down then up, down then up. This is why this type of engine is called 4-stroke internal combustion engine. 4 strokes, down then up, down then up. Internal combustion because the burning of the fuel happens inside of the engine. Not as in the steam engine where the burning of the fuel happens outside the engine. What we described here is a one-cylinder engine. Which you can find typically in small machines like lawn mowers. But there are other configurations of the engine. We have 4 cylinder engines, 6 cylinder engines, 8 cylinders and even up to 12 cylinders and even more. These bigger engines are used usually to power cars. 
But how efficient are these gasoline-powered internal combustion engines? I mean, how much of the energy released by the explosion is actually converted to mechanical work? This is a very important question, because gasoline is a limited resource. It's not like wind or running water that are available and renewable. Gasoline comes from oil, which is a limited resource that doesn't renew itself. So when we search the efficiency of the motor, we are trying to find how much of that precious resource we are actually converting to useful work. And we are also trying to find ways to improve the efficiency to preserve our resources. So let's start by defining efficiency. What is efficiency? It's simply how much energy we are getting as output from the energy we are putting into the engine as input. The energy we put into the engine is the energy we get from the heat of the explosion. So we can represent it mathematically as efficiency equals work over heat input. But you see, the mechanical work is not the only thing we get out of the heat we put in. Actually, some of it is lost in friction and in heating up other parts of the engine. So using the energy conservation law, we can write that the heat input, let's call it Qn, equals the work output that we are using to run the car, let's call it W out, plus the heat lost. Let's call it Q out. Again, the heat we put into the engine is converted into some useful work to run the car and some lost heat. Now let's get back to our original efficiency equation. We said that efficiency is the work output divided by the heat input. From the second equation, the heat input equation, we can find work. If we subtract it Q out from both sides, we will get the work output equals Qn minus Q out. We can use that and put it in our efficiency equation. So the efficiency equation will be Qn minus Q out over Qn, which is equivalent to 1 minus Q out over Qn. Now all we have to do is find the amount of heat lost and the amount of heat we put into the engine to find the efficiency. But how can we find the heat? In order to calculate the heat in gases, we need to study the pressure, the temperature, and the volume of the system. During the explanation of the engine cycle, we have talked on how these variables change during the cycle. So now, we are going to put that into use and calculate the heat going into and coming out of the system. But we will leave that to the next lesson.